Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. It's going to be a great show. This is show number 662. And like everyone else, I'm wearing masks and I'm trying to talk up, speak up, speak clearly so you can still understand me. Hopefully it is working. Today we're going to discuss the things you should consider if you're trying to decide whether to have all of your remaining teeth extracted or if you should save some of the healthier ones and also explain what your options would be should you make one or the other choice. Okay, so um, before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kvitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. It's Dr. Kvitko and Associates. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. In about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to give you the number now. Don't call now, but here's the number, 614-459-9769. And if you want to pre-program that, it's 614-459-9769. Okay, so as I mentioned, what we're going to do is talk about the things you might want to consider if you're trying to decide whether or not to have all of your remaining teeth extracted or if you should just save some of the healthier ones. And if you do save them... Uh, what are your options? And if you don't save them, what are your options? Okay. This comes from a series of questions that I've uh, been asked at the office over the last week or two, where we had a couple of what were called denture consults, people wanting to consult about dentures and what were their um, options. And I thought they just wanted to make sure that they weren't going to have to go without teeth and they wanted, you know, how white can we make them? And it turns out what they really wanted was to know, okay, what if I don't want the traditional denture? What if I want the kind that is held in by implants or the kind I see on TV where they never come out, you know? So I thought, well, let's uh, clear that up for everybody, hopefully. Okay, so let's say you don't have very many teeth left. Um, and this is always, because uh, I have people all the time that come in and say, let's just pull the rest of them and make me dentures. And I'm thinking, and I say out loud, actually, are you sure you want to do that? Because having your own teeth is better than having a denture or a partial for that matter. But if you're already missing some teeth, obviously you're looking at at least a partial denture. And when I say that, I mean the kind that come out at night. Because uh, those think of those teeth as free dental implants. You've already paid for them. You were born with them. It doesn't cost you a penny to keep them unless they have a cavity or two and we can fix that. And sometimes they have a big cavity and they need a root canal, a big filling and a crown to save, but oftentimes that's still worth it. And it's, you're still better off because once you have dentures, once you've taken all of your teeth out, you can't go back. At least very inexpensively, you can't go back. There was a time when we couldn't go back at all, but now with implants, we can. We can get really darn close and honestly now that I think about it if you have good bone and your sinuses aren't in the way uh, you can get back to almost like it was when you had your own teeth but it's costly and who wants to spend money that they don't have to right so um, so let's say you're t but then so let's talk about the partials I guess okay so a partial denture uh, the nice thing about a partial is you can have the palate the roof of your mouth can be exposed when you are eating and drinking because when you have a denture there's plastic up there and you can't taste things the same ice cream doesn't taste like ice cream it tastes a little bit like cold milk and most adults don't drink milk do we we but we love ice cream <laughs> well i'll go to dairy queen or something 
and you don't notice the, that your coffee is hot. You can even burn your tongue because you didn't get it on the palate. Uh, the palate didn't realize that it was that hot. And so it changes things. And now, the other thing about parcels, they have the metal clips. They are visible. There are ways of hiding the metal clips, or having invisible clips, but that involves some crowns, and that involves an expense. But again, it's worth it in most instances, but you just needed to know that that is out there. And that um, if you and think about parcels, they work when you chew, they balance your bite. Uh, a lot of people come in and they only have like a couple teeth that still touch on one side. And so they're doing all of their chewing on that side because that's the only two teeth that touch. And those teeth wear out. You break them, they get decay, um, they get loose because of gum disease, because they're uh, overworked. And if you put partial denture in there and now you have teeth on the other side too, and some teeth around those ones that I said uh, touched, well now they're not being overworked and they're going to last a lot, lot longer. Okay, now I wanted to make sure I talked about parcels because I want to encourage people not to have all their teeth out. Uh, I just actually did a case where we took the person's teeth out, all of them. It was on Friday. And he had several teeth that were savable. He really did. But, you know, in his defense, they looked terrible. And they were going to take a lot of time, effort, and money to fix. So I didn't really argue with him. But, man, getting them out was tricky. They had nice, long, solid roots. And I'm thinking, wow, these things could have served him for the rest of his life. But that's not what he wanted and so we don't uh, put people in a headlock and tell them they have to do it our way we just make sure they understand the options and then we do it okay so now let's talk about if you've had all of your teeth out maybe none of them were savable or maybe you just decided that you just don't want to mess with it anymore because let's face it once you have a denture you can't get a cavity you can't get gum disease you can get uh, ulcerations from denture sore spots, but you can't get those other things. And so you'll never spend a dime on a cavity, I mean a filling. You'll never spend a dime on an extraction again, and you'll never spend a dime on, um, you know, having like gum surgery. But dentures only give you about 30% of the chewing capacity of your natural teeth. So we like to say in dental school, they taught us that Dentures are an okay replacement for bald gums, but they're not a very good replacement for teeth. Now, I like to say, and I've mentioned this many times, for those of you that haven't heard, anybody know how many teeth George Washington had at the time of his inauguration? I'll give you a second to think about that. How many? Was it all 32? Was it 28? Was it seven? <laughs> was it none? Turns out it was one. He had one tooth. And just for fun, if you look at the dollar bill, You'll see what they had to do to make him look normal for that photograph was they had to fill his mouth with cotton to puff out his cheeks a little bit. It's also why he's not smiling. Now, why did I tell you that story? I told you that story because if you get complete dentures, there's a pretty good chance you're going to wind up uh, being in public at some point with no teeth. Whether it's in the hospital where they tell you that you have to take anything removable out of your mouth before, before surgery. Or I had a patient uh, the other day who had us make her dentures. They look pretty. They're very nice. Gives her a great smile. But when she was in for a follow-up, she said, oh, man, you know, she goes, the, the gentleman that lives next door came over and uh, knocked on my door. And I forgot that I didn't have my teeth in when I answered the door. And she goes, I guess I'm not going to get a date. <laughs> so it's something to think about. Because when you have true dentures, the kind that are removable, uh, you have to take them out at times. <clears throat> in fact, you have to leave them out all night or eight hours in a row. Okay, so, um, so besides having your palate covered with a denture, I talked about the chewing capacity. And the other thing about a denture is before you get a denture, or before you think you can get a denture, think about this. Are you one of those people that gags easily when dental x-rays are taken? Because if you are, very likely you're going to have trouble wearing a denture because it's going to make you gag. And uh, people don't really think of that. The other thing about uh, um, uh, wearing a denture is, <coughs> excuse me, I've had cases where people drop them and break them. I've had p cases where somebody's dog got a hold of them and started to gnaw on them. <laughs> I had a woman who brought in her upper partial that she accidentally had dropped on the uh, ground, didn't realize it. I think she had it out of her mouth. It was on her lap. She got out of the car and it was in the driveway and she didn't know it and she ran over it with her car 
accidentally. So, you know, that can't happen if you have one of the uh, other alternatives, the ones like I'm saying you see on TV, where they are implant supported. So what we're going to do is talk about the um, options, and I'm going to give you all of the options, and then we'll go over um, each one, kind of the pros and cons, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> let me just tell you that obviously we talked about conventional complete dentures. There's a thing called bar and clip over dentures. We're going to discuss these in detail in a minute. Mini implant supported over dentures. Um, you can have a case where you have a couple upper implants and a couple lower implants and a bridge between the implants and then some a partial in the back that's kind of hidden. Uh, we could do parallel implants uh, to place bridge work, just like if you had your own teeth. That would be kind of like almost the Cadillac. Maybe that would be the, um, I don't know, what's right below a Cadillac? <laughs> uh, and then uh, ultimately, you could actually have an individual implant wherever there was a tooth. So you could have 28 implants if you wanted. And some people kind of get there gradually because when they have a tooth that comes out, they have us place an implant. Then they have another tooth that uh, gets lost for some reason. And by the way, people tend to like implants so much that what they tell me is, if I ever need another root canal, I'm going to, instead of getting the root canal, I'm going to have you pull the tooth and put another implant in. But ultimately, you could get to where you have implants everywhere. Okay, so it looks like it's about time for us to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. And let me just remind you, I mean, this is going to be a basic question and answer. I try to make it easy so that even if you just woke up or you uh, weren't really paying attention, it should be obvious. <laughs> But I do like to know that you're listening. So we just remember, um, well, you know what? Before we do the contest, let's do this, and then I'll kind of give you the hint. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's question of the day. Okay, so today we're talking about your options if you have lost most or all of your teeth. What are some of your options? Is it A, removable partial dentures, B, complete dentures, C, implant supported dentures, or D, all of the above? All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call 614-459-9769, 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Well, we reopened back on May 1st, and I'm happy to say that things are going very well. Our patients are receiving the same great care we've always provided, and we are placing a huge emphasis on infection control. In addition to face shields, like the one I've worn since 1985, and of course exam gloves, my entire team is wearing surgical gowns and caps, and we are limiting the number of patients we have in the office at a time. I'm also happy to report that there's not been a single incident of COVID-19 associated with our office. Call us at 614-262-9588. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavicko & Associates today, 614 262 
888-5588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, but I think you were all asleep at the wheel. <laughs> I tried to make it easy on you. We don't yet have a winner. So let me just restate the question. We'll leave the phone lines open. I'll go on to the show, and then you guys can call in and speak to my producer, and then if um, you have the right answer, we'll bring you on air. Okay, so the question was, uh, when, when some of your teeth are gone, or all of your teeth are gone, what are your choices? You can have A, removable partial dentures, B, complete dentures, C, implant-supported dentures, or D, all of the above. I think all of the above sounds like a good answer. What do you think? Uh, oh, anyway. Okay. So the number to call, 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. Go ahead and call in, and you'll have a chance to win those free flowers from DeSantis Florist. I'm thinking you have a pretty good chance right now, since everybody else thought it was all, we already had a winner. Okay, so like I said, we're going to talk about the different options that I've thrown out here. We talked about dentures, we talked about parcels, removable parcels. And now the next one, I mentioned bar and clip overdenture. So a bar and clip overdenture, it, historically, was done where you would keep two lower teeth, usually the lower cuspids. You would put like a dome-shaped uh, uh, crown over top and uh, gold. And then you would attach, um, well actually this would have... Um, There'd be like a post that would go into each tooth and onto the post would be this bar that went across and then your denture had like a little clip a little plastic clip just kind of snapped over and that would give it some retention because lower dentures are real pain they flop around there's not much retention the tongue's moving around not like an upper denture where you have the whole palate for suction lower dentures can be a, a problem so a, a bar and clip over denture that would be kind of old technology 1990s maybe 80s 90s but um, but anyway we also have um, so before we go over the uh, before we go to the next one which would be I'll tell you now and then we'll just go over it uh, that's gonna be mini implants okay a mini implant supported denture but we did get somebody who woke up and listened and who called in and <laughs> we have Cindy on the phone hi Cindy hi how are you I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for listening and calling in. Much appreciated. So what is the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? I would say D. D. Yeah, we made it pretty simple. <laughs> <You just Yeah. laughs> on purpose, because yeah. I know it's early. Cindy, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a manager for a shell station. Oh, a shell station. You sound like you have a radio voice. You could be in radio. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, Cindy, stay on the line, please. We're going to get the information where to mail, I'm mean, not mail, but send you those flowers, okay? That's great. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'll hand that to my producer, and he'll get back on the phone with you while I'm talking, okay? So, the next thing I mentioned was mini implants. And mini implants, uh, they're 1.8 millimeters in diameter. They don't have to, you don't have to wait for them to osseointegrate, meaning wait for bone to grow up to them. They are as close as you can get to a wood screw as you get when it comes to dental implants. We actually screw them in. We drill a little hole that's only about um, two thirds of the depth and we put the, the implant all the way down, come in different lengths. And it's this tiny little ball bearing kind of a thing that sticks out of your gum. And then when you put in their little snaps, little O-ring snaps in the denture itself, and when you put it in, it clicks. Man, isn't that awesome that it clicks in if you're a denture wearer and your, your lowers are, are, have been a pain? In fact, your lowers are probably in the drawer, right? Because they don't fit. You can't seem to make them work. Well, we can take your existing lower denture, put the mini implants in, uh, in your gums and down into the jaw, and then take your denture and put those little snaps into it. And you don't even need a new denture, assuming everything else about it is okay. And when I say that, sometimes the teeth are so worn or it's been relined a bunch of times and you still would want to get a new one, but the reality is, is more often than not, you don't need a new one, you just need the implants. In fact, uh, one gentleman I did that for, uh, his biggest complaint after I did it, and he could not wear this thing for, for no matter what he did, uh, but his biggest complaint after I did it was that it took two hands to get it out and it took him about 60 seconds or so. 
and he thought that was uh, a little much and I kind of laughed a little bit and I said really <laughs> you're complaining that it's too tight so anyway okay now the downside of that is those little pegs I mentioned they are always there you you take your denture out you look in there you got the four pegs your tongue can play with them um, uh, but if you don't mind that then it's a pretty good option it's the cheapest implant option and it can be done in one visit like I mentioned so that would be mini implants okay the next one that I do and I maybe came up with this one on my own because it's not something I see many other dentists do but it's an, in, uh, an inexpensive way it's more expensive than mini implants but it's a uh, much more inexpensive than the um, others where everything is implant supported that you hear about, see about. Because what I do is I will place implants where your cuspids used to be, top and bottom. Most often it's top because it's a cosmetic concern, but it makes sense to do top and bottom. And remember I said, if you don't want to be seen without your teeth, well, this is a great option because what we do is we put implants in the corners, run a bridge a fixed bridge between the two that is cemented in does not come out at night only comes out if we take it out and then we make you uh, partial dentures removable partial dentures for the back teeth and I do it in a way that there are hidden clips so you don't even see you can't tell that it's a mixture of a fixed prosthesis or and a removable prosthesis it's pretty cool it really is and if you want to come to the office I can actually show you um, a couple before and afters of how we did it and what it looks like and um, uh, you know the people that get this they're very very happy um, you know if you if you don't want anything that comes out at night this would not satisfy you but if you don't mind that the back teeth come out and you want to have a pretty smile even with your parcels in a cup or, or you know in a drawer well this is the way to go so the plus side then would be that it is uh, less expensive than a full mouth of implants downside is you still take some teeth out and you still come to the dentist, by the way, because um, we have to check uh, to make sure that the partial doesn't, uh, well, your gums are going to shrink, your bone is going to shrink, you're going to need relines of the partial. So keep in mind, you're still a dental patient with all of these that I'm telling you. Okay, even dentures, you're still a dental patient for the same reasons. Okay, now there are, let's see, I mentioned that we would talk about, there's this thing called all on four, or some people do it all on six and I guess it depends not I guess it depends on the quality of your bone some dentists place six implants when they're doing what is called an all on four because um, you know every once in a while one of these implants doesn't osseointegrate or it seems like it's fine but then it fails and if you do six you're still going to have at least you still have five that'll hold this device in uh, but the reality is, is you really only need four if they're properly placed. Now, what's the purpose of an all-on four? The purpose of an all-on four and all-on six is to place the implants where there is good bone and where the sinus is not in the way. The sinus, if the sinus is in the way, and then we have to do sinus uh, membrane lifting, well, that becomes more expensive. And the reason you, you the reason you do the all-on four is because they're placed more anterior. They're kind of at angles that allow for the implant to go into good bone, not necessarily worrying about being straight up and down because you're just going to screw these little screws through this uh, prosthesis that's like a horseshoe. Uh, it has a titanium foundation. It has porcelain uh, baked onto it, and there are little screw holes in four to six places, and only we can get it out. You can't get it out. It doesn't come out for you. It's like having, almost like having your own teeth again. But you're, you didn't have to have any sinus lifting. You didn't, we didn't have to worry about whether your mandibular nerves were in the way because we're working in an area where there are no nerves, okay, on the lower and on the upper. We're working in an area where the sinus is not in the way. Looks like it's time for me to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the final two. Uh, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 662, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea I know you see it too Cause you're too much for me This is Clark Kellogg Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko Aquí, en su sesión favorita Hi, I'm Dominique Greigert Like what you hear? 
Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? Okay, with the last two, and you know that we're talking about implants, we started talking about implants as soon as we got past the bar and clip over denture, I want to remind folks that if you're a smoker, that will increase the chance of your implants not osteointegrating. There are some offices that won't place implants on smokers because the blood supply is diminished, and you know our policy is we will place them. We ask you to stop smoking um, for, I don't know, as long as you can uh, before and during healing. But um, if it doesn't take, if it fails in the first year, we'll redo it. The other thing is, is you have to remember, why did you lose your teeth? If it, was because periodont if it was because of periodontitis, you have to be aware that there is such a thing as peri-implantitis. And you're still going to have to brush, and you're still going to want to floss. You want to take great care of these. And uh, what I find is people tend to do that because they spend a lot of time, effort, and money. Money being the biggest thing there, I think. <laughs> So, but like I said, the last two uh, versions of what we want people to know are available uh, would be the, um, okay, so it's called, well, basically, what, it's called parallel implants. And when I do it, I do 12. I'll do six upper, six lower. I'll put two on the upper left quadrant, two on the upper right quadrant, and I make a bridge between the two. So now you have a row of three or four teeth on each side. And then I put an implant in the corners again, the cuspids, and I make a bridge from cuspid to cuspid. And I do the same thing on the bottom. Now, those have to be parallel. And what does that mean? It means that um, we have to place it in areas where sometimes the sinus is in our way. So it almost always involves sinus lifting, uh, which is a surgery that we do where we come in the side up above, make, a, make an incision, pull the tissue up, make a hole in the side of the bone. Don't touch the membrane like the membrane on an eggshell. And then we, um, we lift the membrane out of the way, we put bone in there, and then we can put our implant wherever we want. On the lower, it's a little bit trickier because you can't move the nerve or you can't uh, without very, uh, a, a lot of work and uh, kind and, I mean, like care, you know, it's really tricky. So what I do is I'll put shorter implants where I'm above the nerve on the lower. And remember the final one was if you go all the way where every tooth that was, is missing has its own uh, implant and its own implant crown. Okay. So the only consideration against those is cost. Everything else is uh, really cool. And is, we should be very happy that we actually have this available to us these days because there was a time when in the textbooks they talked about a thing called a dental cripple, which was somebody who had lost their teeth so early that their bone and their gums resorbed so far, we couldn't do anything for them. They'd have to go around toothless for the rest of their life. Okay, that looks like that's all the time I have. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko.
If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speak.